Hey, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. We are deep in the midst of cleaning and flushing out the cooling system on this car. Didn't want to break into it because it had all the original hoses and clamps. And just like everything else on this car is completely untouched. But I do want the car to run. And so we had to open it up and there was a lot of junk, rust flakes, all kinds of stuff in the cooling system. So we had to take that apart a little more than we thought. Of course, you've probably already seen the header tank is messed up and that's all gonna get looked at. And I'm gonna back you up to the very beginning and take you through it from start to finish. But I wanted to use today, right now, to just do a little intro video and introduce you. As you can see, I've got the radiator out of the car and it's laying here. Come on over here and take a look at, we managed to get the shroud off without disturbing this original foam here. You can see they just put on like some contact cement and it runs down and it's a very light, kind of like an open cell foam. This is all the dirt that was in there and this will just be gently wiped off so we don't disturb this foam. We're not gonna get this wet. And then over here, this is the radiator as it came out. I'm a little concerned about this area here. And you can see we've got the same thing going on over here. So I'm a little freaked out about that. Tons of stuff came out of here. Go ahead and, and take a look down in there. We've got big trouble. And so we need to try to get that all out. And I'm going to be doing that with the hose here in a minute. Here's another look at it. But just wanted to kind of get this intro going and show you this before it starts getting wet and wild. Okay. Hey, this is Chuck at Monocoque Metalworks. It is time to move on on the red car. And if this is going the way I plan it to, the last episode got the fuel system all taken care of. You can see the carburetors are all cleaned up and freshened up. And it is time to face one of my biggest fears on this car, which is the cooling system. Now we have to, the cooling system is 100% original from the factory. Every hose is factory original. Not a single hose clamp has been disturbed, but we have got some serious issues. The bottom of the header tank is completely rusted out. I poured water in and it just came right out as fast as it went in. And that was about a year ago. And then I just walked away from that. We definitely are going to need to replace this hose here. It's obviously broken. So that's gonna have to come off. We are going to have to pull the header tank off and that's gonna be tricky without breaking these hoses and may have to just go ahead and replace them. And hopefully the rest of the cooling system is clear. I will try to flush out the radiator and flush out the block without uh, getting any crusty rust flakes that are in the block in there. I don't know what's going on with the cooling system as it relates to the heater pipes that are going through the bulkhead. With any luck, Bill drained this thing when he parked it, but we are going to find out. I'm also worried about the water pump and the status of the bearings in that. So I guess all we can do is just dive in, start trying to get this header tank out, and then take it from there. I do have a brand new header tank. It's a reproduction, and I've got about half a dozen rusted out ones. I'll probably eventually repair an original, if not this original. But for now, I'm probably just going to go ahead and put that reproduction in here to get the ball rolling and try to get this car running. So let's go ahead and try to get this out. All right, I'll just give you a quick shot here of this mess before I take it apart. And I've already got the coil off. Well, I was hoping <laughs> for a little better than this. I, the header tank was already a total write-off. I mean, it's been all brazed and everything in there. But this is not pleasant. Now, this little uh, extension has not broken or anything. I was able to get that hose right off of there. 
So that was okay. Uh, but I think this radiator is going to end up coming out. And I really didn't want to do that. And if I sound weird, it's because I, you know, I just pulled this hose off 30 seconds ago. So I'm still thinking about what I see here. But let's continue on. Well, it's not any better over here. This this uh, header tank has just completely disintegrated. And there's more junk in there. So I, ca I can't even take chances now. Now we're going to pull the radiator and the header tank. And you can see a bunch of junk fell out onto there. But we're just going to go ahead and pull those. And hopefully I can flush it out well enough with a hose. I've had some pretty good luck with that in the past. Okay, continuing on. Didn't even unbolt the header tank. It just disintegrated. One odd thing, the original hoses are still in great shape. They're still kind of hard. But I don't know, maybe we'll get to reuse them. Uh, we've got some problems in here too. So I guess I wasn't going to, but now I am gonna pull the thermostat housing off. The trick here is to get all this out before you flush it down into the motor further. So if there's stuff up top, getting it out helps. So, all right, now I'm gonna take this, this transfer tube off here and then work on getting the radiator out okay it's been a while things are getting a little intense here um, trying to get the bottom off I got the bottom radiator hose once I started loosening that I did get about a gallon of liquid out of here and it was not straight water so that's probably a good sign. I don't know what it was, but, you know, 50-year-old antifreeze or, you know, I don't know. It didn't have any green tint, but it definitely had, like, that kind of syrupy look. And it's got the smell, too, but more of an alcohol smell. But anyway, I already dumped a whole pan of it. I filled up, I filled up this pan once. I don't know if you can see, but I mean, not only is it brown, but see how like on the top, it's, it's just got kind of like a gelatinous look to it. So hopefully that's a good sign and we didn't have any freezing in here, but you know, this thing was inside of his house for a long time. So we should be all right. But anyway, I'm just struggling at getting the radiator out without trying to hurt anything. So let me just keep going. Okay, this is not fun. <laughs> Things are not as clean as some of the other stuff I've messed with. And uh, I'm just concerned. <laughs> but anyway, I've got the radiator out. It's just leaning forward there. You can see how every little fin is perfect and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'm gonna let it sit here until I have some help to pull it out. And then we will pull it out and start trying to clean it out. I've got high hopes, so we'll see. Okay, she's safely out. And you can see more liquid has come out which has some type of greenish, brownish color. All right. And here she is right over here. And so we've got some sludge and scum in there and a bunch of junk down in there. And what I need to do is get this shroud off without Screwing up this original piece of foam, that might not even be possible. 
but we'll see. Okay, this, this is just going from bad to worse. Uh, just took the thermostat housing off. See if I can turn this around. There's all kinds of stuff right here, but the good news is it's just right there. I can't, I'll try to show you up in there later, but all of that is just right there at the thermostat. So if I suck that out with a shop vac, I might be okay. The other bad news is that I popped this little incorrect fan belt off of there and the water pump is also locked up solid. So that's also going to have to come off. But if there's any good news, the end of this rainbow, it, it's all coming apart from the cooling standpoint. So there will be some peace of mind when it goes back together. Okay, here's what we got. I've laid everything out because I'm going to be throwing some of the stuff in some little plastic bags and labeling things. I want all of these uh, hose clamps and nuts and bolts to go back in the exact holes they came from. Because God knows I did not want to take this all apart, but I knew I was going to have to. I don't think I'll be able to or will want to reuse these hoses, but I will try to do something with them, see if we can soften them up. I've, I've heard that if you soak them in simple green or even there's like a winter green oil or something that can soften things up. I don't know. I'm probably just going to play with them. But anyway, there's all the hoses. Um, they're all still intact and they've got this, you know, here if you want to see how they're made, they've got, it almost looks like a fiberglass cloth. You can see how I guess that cloth is wrapped around the rubber. And then there's a, you know, there's like a, I don't know, a weave of string or cord or something in there. This one here is broken. This one went on the uh, thermostat housing right there like that. So you can see the thermostat housing is full of junk and the thermostat was too. I took another video showing how, see, this was sitting in there like that, and it was all filled up like halfway. What I'm seeing is, uh, you know, a water level. So over here's the radiator. For example, see in here, see how you can see the levels have come down, and this is like a skin here. See that I just kind of flaked out that is sitting at where the water was at a certain level for a while. And then here's some, that's probably a little bit of rust from where I tried to pour some water in it last year. I, I did feel like a tiny bit went in there, but most of it just came out the bottom of here. But anyway, here's some more junk that just came out of the radiator. And what I need to do now is Get this shroud off of here, and I'm going to try to keep this intact. I don't know if that's going to be possible or not. But then what I have to do is try to wash all these flakes. See all these little flakes in here? There's going to be tons of them in there. See, look. I got to get all of this out without flushing it into these tubes. And I actually have a lot of experience with that with older antique cars on really old antique cars. They don't have little tubes to go like this. They have these crazy little, I don't even know how they made this stuff, but it doesn't go straight. And if you want the radiator to look original, you got to use the original one and you've got to get it flushed out. And so basically that just takes patience and persistence and a lot of water pressure. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll tilt it so that this tank here is at the bottom and then it's on a slight angle so that this hole is at the very bottom, see? And then I'll push water up in here so that it goes in there and then just all flushes out without going in there. And then I'll try to do some of that, you know, I'll kind of stick this, you know, on an angle like that and then put a ton of water in here so that it just comes out here and just try to get as much done as I can before I start filling it up and flushing back and forth. Usually that works out all right. I don't want to take this in and have it cooked or rotted out or something like that. And then here you can see where... There's just all kinds of fun in here. 
and the water pump is locked up solid. There was all kinds of junk up in it. So that's going to have to come off too. You can see every one of these hoses has stuff. It looks like, see, I mean, a lot of it already fell out. See, there's some over here. Every hose has stuff in it. This is completely shot. It's been repaired multiple times in the first five years that the car was on the road. Look, there's one there. And see how it's all kind of settled in at a certain level. Well, this is the uh, experiment with the original thermostat in a pot of boiling water. And it works great. It opened, started opening at about 160 and was fully open at about 180. So I guess this is a 180 degree thermostat. I think it's the original thermostat from the factory. You can see how it slides to close off the bypass pipe. But anyway, this was kind of a little fun experiment. So I thought you might like to see it. Okay, we need to keep moving forward to get the water pump off. So I'm gonna have to pull the alternator off. And I just wanna take a quick video here to show how everything goes. Okay, we just had a real breakthrough and a real stroke of luck here. I was in the process of removing the water pump because it's stuck. And I got the alternator off, as you can see. And then you got to take the pulley off to get the water pump bolts out. So I took the four little bolts out of the pulley, but then I just could not get the pulley to come off this like shaft there's like a little mount ring underneath here and so I got a, a pry bar and some towels and I was just ever so gently just pushing on it because I see so many of these where this edge is broken and cracked so then I thought all right let me spray some penetrant on here I've got some real nice penetrant called aerocroil and I sprayed that here right on this little hub to try to push it and then I'm kind of trying to wiggle it and then all of a sudden the water pump moved and I don't think the penetrant got into the water pump bearings because they're they're not there so look at this and it doesn't even sound bad now this may end up having to come off and be rebuilt but we're gonna leave this on for now we're gonna stop taking things apart because I was not very excited about pulling that off. So let's go ahead and just leave this. I'm gonna leave the alternator off for right now for cleaning. I'm gonna put these little bolts right back in there and uh, we'll, we're gonna be okay to try to start the engine. And I don't know, maybe, listen. Might be all right. Okay, we're ready to try to squirt this out. And my initial attempt is to just get the big stuff that I can out. Now, you'll see I've got this turned up at a funny angle like this. That's because I'm going to try to get everything that I can out of this tank out through the top by squirting in here. I figure, you know, the, the flow goes down through the radiator so if we kind of reverse the flow it should maybe get some stuff out all right you ready i god only knows what's going to happen next see it's clogged it's it's not even coming out that's not a good sign all right and you can see that it was there's some kind of uh, antifreeze or something in there. Oh boy, we have got our work cut out for us here. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. All right, I've started squirting in here. So you can see all, look at, <laughs> oh boy. This is, this is just gonna be a lot of work. See it all coming out there? So let's see if we can got it. No, it's still clogged. All right, well, eventually we should break through. I'll just be out here for the next couple hours doing what I can.
All right, we have broken through. See, we're going in the top and we're coming out the bottom. So we've still got clogging in here somewhere, but we're making progress. Slowly. Okay, I've been at this for about an hour and I, I, I'm really getting somewhere. I have gotten a lot of stuff out of here. Let's see. And actually, one thing I got out of there was a chunk of, and that's one little piece of like original solder. And there was another bigger chunk around. I meant to show you guys that. But then I think a lot of what was in here, remember how there was like layers of coagulated stuff? I thought that was just like some kind of rusty buildup. I think it is some kind of like industrial grade stop leak that was brown. See all these stains coming down here? And then that, um, that header tank was so poorly fixed. I think they might've fixed that and then shoved a ton of stop leak in there. You can see a lot of this kind of stuff came out once I got a cross flow going. And it's, it's just, it looked a lot like stop leak coming out. And so I'm feeling a little better about things because I feel like all of that junk in there is gonna dissolve and come out of the block. But this is pretty clear. My last idea, I'm going to boil a pot of water and pour some boiling water in here and see if that kind of jars some of this stuff loose. All right. I just poured in a pot of boiling water, dried it all off. It does not appear to be leaking. Now, of course, it's not under pressure, but this is a good sign. It is free flowing and it is holding hot water and it is not leaking. So I put in the hot water because I'm hoping that it might dislodge a few more things. Um, I'm just letting it sit in there for a little while and then I'll try to do some more scrubbing. But I think we're good to put it back in and give it a whirl. And then there's some things you can put in there that'll dissolve rust and kind of clean it out and flush it out more once it's going. But this is pretty clear of big flakes. So I think we've really accomplished something here. And I'm ecstatic that it's not leaking. I thought water might be pouring right back out of this thing. So it's looking good. All right, yesterday we hosed down and cleared out the radiator itself, and that went really well. Today, we're going to try to hose out the engine block. Now, I came out here early this morning, and I removed this transfer pipe and this hose for the heater. This hose, you might remember from previous videos, it was right here. All right, and it went from this nipple over to this heater pipe here. And you can see that that is rusted and there's some rust in there. But my 67 two plus two in there, all the heater pipes look like this, but they ended up being okay otherwise. So we shall see. But for now, I've got the heater disconnected and we're just gonna concentrate on the engine. I've got this plugged off. The other, this pipe here went from Sorry, I'm moving around too much. This was right down here, and this goes along, and it's hung by two of the um, nuts that hold on the intake manifold underneath of there. It was tough to reach under there and get those. And then right here, down, right, down. I don't know if I can, oh, there you go. See it? See that nipple? That is where it comes out. And actually, that's getting pulled back into the water pump. So the water pump is turning and I've just screwed the thermostat housing back on. There's no thermostat there. There's not even a gasket, but we're going to start squirting water in here and in here. And those are the only two holes right now, except for this little bypass hole here, but these two holes here and that I'm going to cover this up with some plastic to try to limit the water flying around. I don't want to go crazy in here, but, um, Gotta, gotta get that block cleaned out. 
So let's see what we can accomplish. See all this stuff coming out? This is just, we're just flushing out the engine block. I don't know what this is. It's black, it might be iron, it might be old stop leak. God only knows. But, there we go, we're flushing her out. See, we're getting stuff out. I know this isn't the best, but see the black driveway and see this? This is what's coming out. It's just black, but we are making progress and it's flowing through some.